<clears throat> here we go. We are um, trying to go over another um, alteration form, form alteration. This one is going to be very self-explanatory and uh, very brief. Uh, I've got a pedestal sheep form from Duane Dewey, purchased from Matuska Taxidermy Supply, and um, we're trying to turn it into a, a traditional wall hanging mount. As you know that, you know, pedestal mounts are supposed to be pivoted or uh, being held up by a, by a metal rod uh, or through some bolts and nuts into the scenery. And they have a curved back, usually. So we're trying to get rid of that curved back here because the client was asking for the same sheep form but to be hung on the wall. So as you can see, I'm grabbing the biggest square that I had in the shop and try to um, make a very uh, straight line exactly where it needs to be cut to the point that uh, I remove all the curved excess form from the back of the mannequin and uh, I can turn it into a flat wall hanging mount. It's a fairly simple process, just a little bit of labor involved. I'm sure most of you guys know, but I thought, you know, now that I'm doing it, might as well um, turn on the camera and let it go. And uh, maybe someone out there would benefit from this. So as you can see, it's very important to have that uh, straight line all around the back. I tried to use uh, my square and ho hold it in a very straight position or at least as straight as I can get it and then uh, cut it out. Now here from this angle you can see easily how much I'm cutting out from the back of the mannequin. So I find it quite easy to use my sawzall or reciprocating saw because um, I have a better control over it. I can see where I'm cutting and also I can cut a little bit at a time instead of like in one pass. Now you can see I'm not cutting on the line that I drew, but I'm going right along it. So that was my um, basically straight line that I needed to follow. But I, at the same time, I can leave as much as possible left on the mannequin. So the, the back of this form, um, how it comes from the supply house, it has uh, the wooden block, as you can see I have um, used it to hold up um, the mannequin on my uh, mounting stand. Here I'm basically cutting out the extra leg that was, uh, or the part of the uh, shoulder. I'm sorry, the brisket that was showing, I just cut that piece out, try to make it uh, more pleasing on the wall. Now I uh, lay it down flat on the table and use a half inch plywood, trace around it and cut it out because the back of the form doesn't have any um, wood to be able to put the hanger on there. There is, uh, as I mentioned, there is a little bit of a 
block of wood in the middle just for uh, helping us how to mount it and how to hold it on the mounting stand. So with a, with a half inch plywood that goes on the back. Now you can see that it's not going to sit flat. There's going to be some hollow area because still, you know, the shape of the wall ped uh, sorry, the floor pedestal form uh, still had some curved belly in going inside. So what I'm doing right now, I'm creating some holes on the on the plywood so I can secure that plywood to the back of the foam because when we pour foam, the liquid foam, it's going to expand and it can easily, if you just want to lay it down in there or hold it down, it can easily expand and push the plywood out of place. Now I'm marking the areas that the wood is touching the form and I'm applying a generous coat of Bondo to those edges that the plywood is touching the foam. I'm pressing it down and holding it down with those screws that I was making the holes for. Yeah, well, I'm using a lot of screws because uh, I'm, uh, I'm afraid of the expansion of the foam. It's a very powerful uh, thing when it starts to expand. It can really warp things out of shape. So part of the reason that I um, wanted to use Bondo on the edges is, uh, first of all, it's it's it provides a very strong adhesion and also as you can see with the remaining of the bondo I can seal off the edges where the plywood is meeting the foam and uh, purposefully I leave some areas open so that's where my pour or my foam is going to be pouring down in there but now I don't need to really worry about my liquid foam seeps out of the edges because I have fairly sealed it off fairly good so now I'm gonna pour the foam well this video is gonna be a little bit short comparing to the other ones I'm fairly straightforward so anyway the foam is uh, mixed and I'm pouring it right through that gap that I left open and after the foam is all set and rasped off the excess and everything I'm coming back to attach the mounting stand to the back of the plywood and proceed with mounting the sheep which in the next video uh, or maybe the next two or three uh, I'll show you the process of mounting the sheep well thanks for watching and this was it for today's video